What's uh, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're filming part three in the series where we're working closely with How Performance to upgrade the steering on the truck. If you guys are new to this series, obviously go back and watch the first two. You're gonna get a ton of information out of those. And if you've been on this channel for a while and you're not subscribed, make sure to go down and do that right now. Helps the channel grow, helps us expand. But this episode's gonna be the best one yet. We have a ton of work that we're gonna be getting done, a bunch of nice parts to throw on the truck. And by the end of this episode, it'll be time to put fluid in the system and take it for a drive. So let's hop into it, show you some of the parts we just picked up from Hal. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. We went and picked up the rest of the steering system from Hal. We have a bunch of nice parts to put on there. This box is my new favorite piece in the whole steering system. Believe it or not, this is the same one that we dropped off with them, even though it doesn't look remotely similar. The most obvious difference you see is we have the two ports that are for the RAM. So we have those added in there now. And then they also changed the rest of this control valve quite a bit. So this whole end piece that's bolted on is your control valve and it's guiding where the fluid's gonna be going. And I thought when you're steering, it's direct input into the box, but that's actually incorrect. Inside the control valve, there's a torsion bar. So when you're turning, that whole torsion bar is rotating, but it also twists a little bit. And when it twists, it allows fluid to go into these ports, it guides it out. So that's what's controlling where the fluid goes in your system is the twisting of that torsion bar. So you could imagine by switching to a different torsion bar, you could make the steering lighter or heavier. So instead of going heavier, which would be a stiffer torsion bar, which would make it feel like manual steering, how went ahead and set us up with a lighter torsion bar. So that's gonna make the steering feel even lighter, which is perfect, and it's gonna guide the flow out to the ram even easier. But that's not even it. They also went through in this control valve and ported it out. That way fluid can flow easier with less resistance. And then they've also cable tied all the bolts so there's no issues with anything backing out. So that's just their attention to detail right there. And they've even pressed lettering onto here. That way we know which lines go to which side on the RAM so there's no issues with us mixing that up. So this whole control valve has been completely revamped. It's not even close to what it was. And then also the rest of this box has been reworked quite a bit as well. We did mark for internal stops and they got that all handled. And then they've even gone the extra mile and put this new sector shaft in there. Apparently the Ford ones are prone to cracking, so they just replaced that for us so we don't have any issues down the road. And then they've even gone through and completely painted this whole thing. So they've used some sort of epoxy paint and it looks super good. And this one blows the old box out of the water. Honestly, this box came back looking way better than I thought it was going to. I thought we were gonna get back our black box with our rusty pitman arm, but they've gone through, prepped, and painted everything, including the pitman arm. So if I had known that, I would have prepped it for them before we sent it out, but they went ahead and did all that for us. So that just goes to show you that these dudes wanna set you up with the nicest looking product possible to put on your vehicle. So moving away from my favorite part of the steering system, we also picked up all of our hoses and our fittings to do the plumbing. One thing you probably noticed is we only have one high pressure line, which is right here. And the reason for that is you only need high pressure line going from the pump to the steering box and then the two lines going to the ram. That's all that needs to be high pressure. Everything else is low pressure. It's not necessary to have those high pressure lines there. And so we have dash six, that's the high pressure line. And then we also have another dash six low pressure line and that's gonna be the vent going from the pump to the reservoir. So that's what we have that for. Also, we have our dash eight. This is going from the steering box to the reservoir. So that's coming out right here and then traveling up to the reservoir with the inline cooler in there as well. Then we also have our biggest line, which is dash 10. And that's gonna be the supply line going from the reservoir down to the pump. Jumping in hose sizes like this is pretty important because you don't wanna bottleneck the system and choke up fluid anywhere. So coming out of the pump, that's where you need to have your smallest line. That's why it's dash six there. And then after that, it just keeps opening up. So it goes through the box, through the ram and everything. Coming out of the box, it opens up to dash eight. So we're getting even bigger. You don't wanna choke it up and go smaller. So it's flowing, 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 gets to the reservoir. And then from the reservoir to the pump, it opens up to that dash 10. So it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger throughout the system. That way you're not choking anything up. One thing you also need to keep track of is the inner diameter of the hoses. That's where the fluid's traveling through. So that's what you really need to keep track of. Looking at the two dash six lines that we have, there's an obvious difference between the low pressure and the high pressure. This low pressure has a bigger inner diameter than the high pressure. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing your hoses. Also, we have all of our fittings. We're using push locks for all the low pressure lines and we're using AN fittings for the high pressure lines. So we have dash six, dash eight, and dash 10 obviously to assemble all the hoses. Now that we have everything, it's time to start putting it on the truck. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is make that vent line from the pump to the reservoir, because if you remember, that's kind of hard to get to. So I'm gonna get that done first, that way we can get that whole bracket on there, and then I'm gonna get the box mounted, and then we'll do the, the ram now, since we can do that, since the box is done, and then we'll start making all the rest of the lines. Right now I'm getting ready to assemble the hose that's gonna be the vent line from the pump to the reservoir. And one thing I wanted to mention is when you're putting these push lock fittings or any sort of fitting on, you're gonna to wanna to use some sort of lubricant. So I'm using power steering fluid. I'm just gonna douse that on the end here. And then with the push locks, you just push them in until it's completely seated. So you have these two barbs that are gonna block off anything and ensure that you have a nice fit. And we're using these red horse little clamps right here. That's what we've used for all the hoses on the truck. So that's what I'm gonna do is use that lubricant. If you don't, you could potentially burn the inside of this, this rubber liner. And when you do that, you could get blisters or something crazy. So just use some sort of lubricant when you're putting these things together. Just cutting into the montage a little bit because I wanted to cue you guys into what exactly we were doing right now. Through those last clips, you could see we had to make a new mount for the tie rod right here for this ram to go on. The one that we had made wasn't out far enough, so the clearance to the pitman arm was very tight. It was almost rubbing against it. So with this new one, it'll space it out correctly and we should have no clearance issues. So that is cooling right now. What else have we been doing? We've also been doing some of the lines. So we have the dash 10 feed line from the reservoir into the pump, that's ready to go. And then the vent line, which was the hardest one coming off that pump, is done into the reservoir as well. And then we're waiting to do the dash eight return line from the steering box up to the reservoir because we need another fitting. So that's on the way right now. What we're planning on doing actually is coming from the box. <laughs> you probably because I'm hitting like everything over here. We're coming out of the box. The dash eight is this guy right here. We can't, this is the problem is with this current 90 setup is, let's see, just swivel that around for you guys. We're gonna come out, we're gonna mount the cooler right here. So right there, it's coming back down. So you're gonna have a place right here for air to get stuck so we can't run this fitting. So I ordered a 45, so that's gonna 45 out of there. Shoot it over to here, 90 into the cooler, come up. 90 out of the cooler, come over and go into this 90 into the reservoir. So it's kind of short. It's shorter than we'd like to have, but we have so much stuff in this engine bay that we're packing a lot into it and it's a very tight space. So we're limited on our options. So that's what we have to go with to compensate for that. We did make the dash 10 feed line to the pump a little bit longer just to increase the volume in the system. So hopefully that should compensate for it. That's the plan with the dash eight. Once this ram is completely in, we can make the lines coming out of there, which will come up into the box. But before we go ahead and make those lines, we do have to let that piece cool down a little bit. We'll fit it, tack it on there, and then the ram has to come out, and so does that tie rod, so Christian can weld it on the bench over there. And then the box is gonna come out so we can fully weld the tab on the frame. And then once that's done, we'll paint everything, the box will go back in, then we'll make those lines, and then Really, we'll be waiting on the fitting for that dash eight return. Uh, that'll be the last thing we're really waiting on. And then the pitman arm uh, for that nut, we actually can't run the one because Jeff did give us very nicely a new sector shaft. And with that, he included a Stover style nut that's a little too thick. Um, our pitman arm doesn't go up onto the sector shaft 
too far. So what we're gonna do is get a stock style Pitman arm nut. That way it can thread all the way on there and then we'll end up using a lock washer. To get the Pitman arm on there now, we actually had to pull the one off of Christian's truck and put it on there and we did that to 230 foot pounds just to get the Pitman arm seated. So right now there's no nut on there, but there's no chance of the Pitman arm coming off. We've been playing with nuts all day. Yeah, dude, Christian loves it. But that's where we're currently at, so we'll just move right back into the montage. We just got to the point where we're going to need to add our internal spacer into the ram. That way it maxes out at the same point that the box and the spring. Yeah, you look like you're about to tell a scary story. <laughs> Go ahead. Ooh. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're getting ready to put in this ram right now. We've gone over shank in the past, but I'll just run through it really quickly. This is the shankier bolt, the unthreaded part. And you want the unthreaded part through both sides of the tab. So just holding it up there, you can see it makes it all the way through, so that's perfect. If you're riding on the threads, the bolt that's not where the bolt's the strongest, so you want to get that all the way through like that. Uh, we have a full video on how to properly shank your bolts, and I'll just throw that in the description if you guys want to watch it. We basically make sure that's right, and then we cut down the threaded part, that way it's not sticking out a bunch. Uh, so I'm just going to set this in there right now for the last time. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Now that we got that ram in, I think I'm gonna wrap up the episode here. We got a lot done. Pretty much all the hoses are ready to go. We literally have one fitting that we need. On the dash eight side, uh, Christian's just down here putting some uh, marker on all of the threads. That way we know if anything comes loose. You can see he did that one right there. Yep. And so he also did the Pitman arm nut. Stuff is called Viz Torque. I know a lot of people have been asking about this stuff. I get questions on this all the time. This is just another protectant. Like we have our stover on here. Typically you'll use Loctite depending on what you're doing. And then this is also another protection. The cool part about this is when you're nut and bolt checking the truck, you can just go around and check your mark with this stuff and see if it's broken. And that way you'll know if your nut backed off at all. And it just makes things a lot quicker instead of having to put a physical uh, wrench on every bolt. All right, so sweet. So on the dash eight side, we do have the coolers going here. We have this section of line completed, but where it goes up and into the reservoir, we need a 180 out right here. And having a 180 there is not a big deal because it's not going down. We're not gonna have a high spot. It's gonna remain horizontal, so no high spots. So it's gonna wrap around and then come back around into the cooler. So that's what we're waiting on. That should be here in the next few days. But I wanna wrap this video up. It's currently Wednesday night and I wanna have the video out Friday. Um, so that's pretty much where we're at this video. On the next one, we will get that last line in and then bleed the system and go take the truck for a drive. If you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.